Well, indeed, thank you for staying with us here on KTN Business today. My name is Peter Okabon. This second part of the show, we want to talk about matters brewing and innovation. Now, of course, the <clears throat> brewing industry in Kenya, the alcoholic beverage industry, rather, has been very competitive in the recent past. We've seen a whole range of new products that have come into the market to be able to carve a niche. And, of course, cater to the needs of an upwardly mobile younger clientele here in Kenya. Well, to speak into that conversation and, of course, give us insights on what exactly his organization has been doing in this uh, space, we have uh, at our city center studios, Fred Otieno, uh, head of innovation at Kenya Breweries Limited. Indeed, Karibu sana, Mr. Otieno. Thank you very much, Peter. Now, first off, of course, the... For most uh, Kenyans, uh, when you say alcoholic beverage, uh, what comes into their head is uh, the various beers. We, of course, have things like Tasca. Uh, we have a White Cup and that sort of thing. But recently, we have started to discover that this thing is much, much wider. We've seen the influx of whiskey brands. We've seen an upsurge of things like rum and that sort of thing. Talk to us about uh, what exactly is happening in this field. Uh, basically, the market continues evolving. And as it keeps evolving, it, it, is, it is creating uh, new opportunities for, for consumers. Mm -hmm. um, so we ha are seeing a market that is continuously shifting and shifting towards the trends that consumers are showing us to go, basically. Yes. So you'll see that there's been a very accelerated rate of uh, innovation in the recent past. Mm -hmm both within beer and also within spirits. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Otena, I'd like you to look straight into the camera so we can uh, continue to speak. Now, for most uh, young Kenyans, uh, the fact of the matter is Thank that you. they grew up with a lot of, uh, uh, of the older generation uh, consuming one end of that spectrum, mostly the beers and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, the tastes have changed, palates have changed, businesses are now uh, changing too much, as you're saying. What exactly are you doing as an organization to be able to, well, be in this space? So we continuously get feedback from our consumers and are always doing research uh, in terms of trends and what consumer profiles that are changing. And in that space, then, we are able to see what are the things that consumers desire into their repertoires right now. So we are able to capture the changes in taste and preferences, as well as the new things that consumers are seeing that are shaping their aspirations based on what's happening in other parts of the world. So our young consumer nowadays is able to get their influences shaped not only by what's happening within the local market, but also other markets globally. So then on that note, maybe you can speak into what exactly has your research said about the Kenyan market and where exactly it is going, especially in view of the fact that uh, we've seen a real diversification of, uh, well, choices for people and it's a sort of a democratization of the sector. Yes. So we have seen consumers desiring uh, differentiated uh, beer tastes. So you'll see um, a continued growth in the beer segment that looks at new flavors and new tastes um, into their current beer offering. A bit in terms of the upper end also uh, a growth in what we call craft, uh, which is specialty beers that are created with a lot of passion by uh, you know, very uh, experienced people. Uh, uh, secondly, you'll also see a shift in terms of spirits with flavors. So we've seen the market exploding with new flavors, um, some of which are from our stable. Um, and we are always expanding uh, the portfolio to make sure that then it caters for all sorts of consumer profiles, both in the upper end and also towards the lower end as well. In uh, also uh, the fact that uh, there has been, uh, well, a, a trend, so to say, that especially among the younger and upwardly mobile aspirational consumers, as you say, to start to try more exotic uh, drinks, uh, things like, uh, well, the rums that we've seen in the market. Talk to us about uh, why this is happening now, and of course, what the choices have been. So we've, we've recently launched uh, Captain Morgan Gold, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's one of those brands that is a global brand and people are aware of it. Yes. 
Yes. However, it has always been a little bit inaccessible from a pricing perspective. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is made sure that we bring it in and use our local expertise to produce it locally, mm -hmm. uh, to allow the consumer, especially the young adult consumer, to afford it at the right price. Yes. So this is a case where we've looked at a global brand that has global credentials and a world-class liquid delivered in the right way and at an appropriate price point for our consumer today. So it's basically being able to leverage our strength of the business globally and using our local expertise to deliver that which is right for the Kenyan consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the reports would have tended to indicate that the Kenyan palate tends to trend towards sweeter drinks. Uh, if you were to do a poll of uh, 10 ladies and ask them what would you like to drink, they say red sweet wine. So even with these other brands, I think we're tending to start to see well, a travel, a movement of the brands towards their sweetness. Is that the case in this sector as well? So there, I would say there's a dynamism in terms of taste profiles, yes. I would say there's growth in terms of sweeter palate. Mm -hmm. And truth, truly, uh, younger adults are probably grown up in environments that have more sweeter liquids or sweeter foods uh, being offered to them. And that actually affects the way their palate uh, perceives uh, things. But that said, there's also shifts um, in areas where people do not desire sweetness. So you'll see a proliferation of beverages that not only focus on things that are sweet, but also people who don't want sweetness. And that pro probably creates a dichotomy or the environment within which innovation can really thrive because you have different consumer profiles shifting. And ad ad additional to that, I would say that there's also something around what people want to taste or drink or eat within different occasions. There are certain opportunities where somebody wants to be in a more indulgent occasion, and therefore they might prefer something that's more indulgent in terms of the taste flavor. So you'd see that all these are diversities that we have to be really attuned to as innovators to make sure that we then provide the right kind of product for the consumer at the right time. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, of course, uh, research also indicated at one point that in the Kenyan market, we had a sort of, uh, as you say, dichotomy. Where on one end, we had consumers who want something really strong in terms of alcohol content, while at the other end, uh, most of them tend not to be really matured alcohol consumers. So in terms of spirits and that sort of thing, they don't want really strong flavors and they need something subtle that will uh, make them enjoy what they're drinking. What has the innovation in this area led to production of? So we, we, we see, uh, I would say, a growth in some of the stronger alcoholic beverages, yes. both in beer as well as uh, cocktails or mixed drinks. Uh, and this is also driven by the fact that consumers want something slightly stronger and a better value for their spend. But at the same time, we are able to also offer products that are of a much you know, lower in terms of uh, you know, alcoholic content, to, but at the end of the day, it delivers the right experience. So consumers necessarily don't look at uh, content as a key driver, but the experience that we're able to give uh, to them. And that, for me, is the opportunity to deliver some really exciting innovations that deliver the right kind of taste and world-class experience that all consumers in Kenya are looking for. Uh -huh. Finally, talk to us about the recently launched product itself, Captain Morgan Gold. What exactly goes into making uh, this uh, uh, beverage? What consumers can expect in the near future? And of course, what this whole uh, market holds for this sort of thing going forward? Good. So Captain Morgan Gold uh, recently launched in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, it is a delicious liquid, uh, specially made or created to go excellently well with cola. Um, as a mixed drink, and it is based out of a brand, Captain Morgan, which is renowned globally for being a fun brand, an exciting oh, brand for, for consumers. So it it's targeted towards it. millennials. It has the right taste profile in terms of liquid. It's based out of a rum with delicious notes of vanilla, and we know that consumers will find it amazing, as we had seen uh, within our research. So you're going to see a lot of this kind of products targeting you know, the right type of consumer profile in the future. At the moment with Captain Morgan, we are launching it with a big marketing push. There's activities that are bringing Captain to Kenya. Uh, we had the pleasure of hosting the global uh, Captain Morgan ambassador 
last week as we did the launches. And you'll see a lot of all that, um, that Captain Morgan embodies through our marketing activities in the coming months. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for taking the time to talk with us. Of course, he's a friend of Jenny. He is the head of innovation at Kenya Broadies Limited. Of course, one of the larger uh, companies in the region when it comes to al alcoholic beverages and, of course, market leader in that segment. And, well, talking to us about a recently launched beverage and what exactly the company is doing in terms of innovation so that they can continue to cater for uh, local and, indeed, coming uh, consumption that continues to come into the market. Again, thank you very much.